and we're going to move to game time. We're moving to game time. Now, as we reported a couple weeks ago, uh, AT&T and Warner Brothers are kaput. Not as far as like the companies will still exist, but the merger they had is no longer. And Warner Brothers is going to be trying to secure a deal with Discovery. It's not uncommon when these things happen to roll off parts of the company to uh, avoid antitrust litigation, you know, and show that you're not cornering a market per se. Or it just might be it might be more valuable to like maybe Discovery wants all of these studios minus one or two of them. You'd be like, yeah, we like a lot of these, but we just don't we don't need Studio One or Two. Uh, so. Uh, at t Warner Brothers is rolling off a, a studio called Playdemic, and they created the game Golf Clash uh, and selling it to EA for $1.4 billion. So I was trying to see what other games they had <laughs> other than this go- Golf Clash, but apparently the Playdemic's mobile division, which is what they, which with their bread and butter, is really darn good. Um, so yeah, that number... I have to dig into that a little bit more, but just the number threw me off. 1.4 billion for a mobile games developer, uh, and it's just not a. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying I have every game, <laughs> every mobile game on my phone. Not uh, certainly not. Uh, it's just still a little surprising. Um, yeah, just a little, just a little surprising uh, at the number. So I'll dive into that more. And maybe there's a game. Maybe there's some. Um, maybe they just do really well if their ads in their games or something like that, which is why they uh, did well in that. Now, at t and Warner Brothers has stated that there will be no further game studios. Uh, you think about like Rocksteady and some of the other uh, Warner Brothers game studios that are underneath them. They said no more would be rolled off. Uh, and I could also see an argument made that there is a good reason for them not to roll those off into someone else. Because uh, then you could get uh, other game studios, like an EA. Okay, and EA getting his mobile platforms, one thing. EA getting like Rocksteady, that's a whole nother. And if you're wondering like, Rocksteady, what's it? Yeah, Rocksteady, that's your Batman um Ar- that's your Arkham, Arkham Knight, Arkham City uh, games right there. Uh, so I personally don't want that rolled under EA if we can just if we can avoid that. So I'm I hope they stick to their guns and it's only the studio. And they said they're on this is the only one that's getting rolled off. Discovery wants the rest in the deal. So here's hoping. There's also like DC licensing that would come with that as well. So Warner Brothers is obviously going to keep their DC licensing under that, but that would mean the studios that get rolled off may not have that anymore. So uh, yeah, EA, you know, that, you know, I didn't think I'm thinking about it on the fly as we're talking about it. But yeah, even if EA bought Rocksteady, that's not a guarantee that Rocksteady would get to continue to make Warner Brother property games, ergo DC DC property games. So uh, we shall see. All right, for a game you didn't know you wanted, uh, but I promise you will, you do. Uh, Space Jam A New Legacy is getting a beat-em-up uh, arcade-style game. So so apparently Xbox had put out uh, some feelers and uh, about what fans would want, potentially want, in a uh, Space Jam game. So fans got to submit some ideas, and Development Studio Digital Eclipse is the one that t- took this up. So last December, Xbox is the one that put, this, put these feelers out for folks to give them, and this game is a result of that call. Uh, and apparently I picked uh, two winning ideas uh, from a, a user, Ricky, in the U.S. and Nirayan in India. Uh, Eclipse, we haven't heard a whole lot from them, but they've been making games since the 90s and recently been responsible for some arcade-style revivals like the Disney Afternoon Collection, Blizzard Arcade Collection, and Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. Um, and it's seen... Oh, sorry. I thought I had... I know the movie comes out July 16th. And oh yes, so let me confirm for that. Uh, it's coming exclusively as a Xbox Game Pass Ultimate perk beginning on July first. So you'll be able to play this this week. Um, and let's see, and then eventually a Microsoft Store you'll be able to get it as a free to play title on the fifteenth. So even if you don't have uh, Game Pass Ultimate, uh, so long as you get on the Microsoft Store, you'll be able to play this on your computer. So yeah. Uh, and if you did not, I did not grab screenshots for the special edition Space Jam controllers for Xbox. Those are actually kind of, those are actually pretty sweet. The Toon Squad one in, in particular is pretty, pretty nice. So, uh, yeah, definitely give that a, give that a gander when you get opportunity. And let me go to the chat. Taryn says, the graphics are on point. What was that a reference to? No, oh, the graphics I made. Yes, thank you. Yeah, uh, apparently people like uh, having the watermark, knowing that we're 
being attentive to that thumbnail. Thumbnails are important, people. <laughs> Let's see. And a nice cup of tea. Some pretty arbitrary gatekeeping there. Yeah, I mean... It's almost like it's almost like Spielberg didn't watch the movies that came out on these streaming platforms. Like, it's like if some if something's if something is eligible to be nominated, and the Academy looks at that movie and says, "Yeah, that's good enough to be nominated," then that should be it. Like the number of places that you sh uh, are shown is just that, like yeah, that is definitely an arbitrary. Like I'll get into that more Tuesday night. I promise I'll break down some some of the stupidity there. But really what it is is like when you release a movie, it needs to be in so many theaters before it can be considered um, in the Oscar nominations. But um, that's not that doesn't really seem to be what Spielberg was digging at. I think he's just saying the quality of Netflix movies is, does not rise to the occasion, which I'm like, who are you? Like, you haven't shot an indie film in decades. It's not a knock on Spielberg. I love him. It's great that he's doing... Um, uh, He's been doing well for quite a long time. Um, but, you know, you could make that same argument for like a bunch of indie films that probably should be up for contention on Oscars, but they're just not going to get the number of screens. So I don't know. Like, yeah, I'll talk about that more on Tuesday, but it is very arbitrary. And it's like if the Academy was working enough to decide that that movie should be in contention, then the number of screens it showed on, I just I don't care. I just do not care. Uh, Taryn's running out of bandwidth, so yeah, we'll see you, hopefully see you soon. Um, yeah. What do we got next? So, Space Jam. Hey, if you want to stream Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, guard this new Guardians of the Galaxy from Square Enix is also going to include, uh, very much like its movie predecessor, or sorry, uh, yeah, like its movie predecessor, going to have some fantastic mu music. You already kind of saw that in the trailer, like just a fantastic selection already there and have to feel that trailer. That's going to continue in the game. But if you've streamed anything on Twitch or Facebook, you know that you can get a DMCA strike like that uh, and just get your stream cut off midstream or run into issues. So uh, an easy fix usually has been to just turn the music down, but that may also turn down your game environment music. Uh, Square Enix has confirmed uh, through the Montreal studio. Or sorry, let me make sure I say that correctly because it's not just it's not just Square Enix. Yeah, EDS Montreal, that's who I was thinking about, uh, that you will have the opportunity to disable the soundtrack. So you can still hear all the game sounds and everything, but it will just turn the soundtrack piece off. Uh, that's a very important distinction uh, so that you can still have a balanced audio experience as you're playing the game. You just won't have the awesome soundtrack if you're streaming it. Uh, for most players that aren't streaming, this won't be a big deal. But uh, yeah, if you've ever been had that strike, it can suck. And you're like, oh, this is having a good time. And just... So kudos to you, Square and Eidos. All right, and a quite fun and heartwarming story from Nintendo. So um, a young a young kid, um, the, so we don't know the kid's name, but we know the father's handle, please be nice, G-N-E-I-S, uh, on Twitter, uh, recounts a story that Nintendo got back to his son. Uh, they're work, uh, he's working with his kid to send a letter to Nintendo. And if y'all remember back in the day, there was this great little magazine called Nintendo Power. Uh, and some people were kind of freaking out, like, what do you mean, what do you mean Nintendo responded to the kid? That's crazy. Like, Nintendo does this. Um, we can talk about some of the other missteps Nintendo's had in the past decade or so. But when it comes to actually responding to fans, this used to be something they were really good at. And it's warming to see this happen again. So particularly, the kid was asking, and I'll quote them, Dear Nintendo, could you please... or I." It's correct enough for him. This is also a very young kid. So I'll say it just like the kid did. Dear Nintendo, could please make non-binary Pokemon? Also, I want that because I think it would be cool and so non-binary people would feel more comfortable about it, the child wrote. Uh, and then the dad posted the letter on Twitter, which, again, I know you can't see that, and I also can't blow it up in a way that would be legible on here, so I'll throw a link to it if you want to check it out later. But uh, let's read what Nintendo's response was. Uh, thank you for writing to us. In your letter, you asked us to make non-binary Pokemon. I think that is an awesome idea. Uh, there are so many varieties of Pokemon, so it makes sense to have a variety of genders as well. We want to make sure people of all kinds feel welcomed and comfortable while playing our software. So, hey, nice job, Nintendo. Now, granted, we'll have to see them follow through on that, 
But they've also followed through on a lot of different requests for Pokemon to be more inclusive. They eventually removed or gave you different options for gender uh, characters because um, it used to be just you were just the dude red. You were just that one sprite in Pokemon. Uh, and then eventually they added um, different options of different ways you can be displayed, uh, display yourself as a trainer in Pokemon. Uh, now, some users on Twitter, I'm not going to repeat their statements verbatim, uh, took exception at gendered Pokemon, uh, saying that it wasn't a big deal in the past. And to them, I would say, eh, get over it. Like, we've had, if anything, Pokemon was very non-binary in the beginning because you didn't really have sexes assigned to the Pokemon. They were just Pokemon. Then they added genders for, like, the breeding things that were going to happen later. I'm sorry, sexes. Sorry, added sexes for uh, uh, the breeding that would happen in later iterations. So this is actually just kind of going back and adding more diversity that was kind of there already, but it was undefined. And then they're uh, just expanding more options for the Pokemon there. Uh, and I don't have this confirmed, but there's already Pokemon that exist that might fit this bill anyway. So it might be some things that Nintendo doesn't necessarily have to create another Pokemon, but just one that's more um, being more upfront about what that particular Pokemon's expression is. So um, yeah, I'm really, I think that'd be really cool really excited about it <laughs> and see a nice cup of tea still in an affirming letter is a good st yeah yeah uh and even the letter obviously upsets the apple cart for bigots yeah i i don't know if i would recommend reading all that twitter fred I'll, again i'll throw the link in there uh but it did get a little did get a little wild um but yeah i definitely appreciate nintendo for doing that 